People who take massive war crime level dumps in public bathrooms but don't flush? Why? Well, having had the office by the bathrooms, I can probably tell you. Mostly, they just don't know that it didn't go down. Epic-filled bowls take more than one flush, and some people's mothers didn't raise them to check their flush. They just get up, hit the lever, hopefully wet their hands, and leave. Other people clog the toilet. In my case, we had a plunger, but many bathrooms just don't for some ungodly reason. And even in our case, many people just leave because they don't know slash don't want to deal with a clogged toilet. Again, I blame bad parenting. Probably just didn't get enough hugs as a child. Oh, and there were a few people that put fucking paper towel down the toilet. Those are the cat stranglers. You really have to watch out for them. Used to work in a small office with two separate bathrooms, one on either side of our office space. Each was a tiny room with a toilet and a sink. There was a guy who, without fail, about an hour or two after lunch, would decimate one. Crime scene level mess, with the odor as well. And that odor would waft outward to the nearest cubicle residents who complained daily. He never flushed, and his excuse was that he'd read how toilets create an aerosol effect when they're flushed which sends a cloud of mist into the air, and he refused to endure that because who knows who else used that toilet? Which meant that someone else got the honor of being sprayed with his leavings. Boss told him he had two choices. Flush and spray Lysol generously, which truly does little to abate the stench, or use the facilities somewhere else. I'm sorry to say that he chose to go to the nearest fast food place instead. To those valiant McDonald's employees, I'm so sorry. You did not deserve that. I did this once because I had no choice. I had to be somewhere early for work that was one and a half hours away, so I'm driving this whole time, before sunrise, drinking coffee, a little nervous for this work thing, and now I have to shit bad. I find a random Denny's and run straight to the bathroom. There's only one stall. I lock the door and turn to find someone clog the entire bowl with paper and ass gaskets. I proceed to push out this ridiculous soft serve mountain on top of the soggy paper platform. Like a McDonald's ice cream cone, but shit. The entire pile is above water. I had to hover and wipe just to avoid touching it. I had no choice but to top it off with a blanket of shitty paper. By the time I'm done, the summit is a good three inches above the seat level. I could push that flusher a hundred times and the whole structure wouldn't budge. Absolutely shameful. If anyone here is a Denny's employee in Northridge, California that had to deal with this, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is my story and I can't be bothered changing accounts to a throwaway, so hopefully I don't get any repercussions. I had a customer years and years ago. She hated me and I never knew why. I was polite, eager to help, but not obnoxious. My boss theorized it was because I was a kid. Mind you, I was about 21, but looked around 15. I found out she worked as a cleaner for public toilets, and that included a local one. One day, I was serving her at the register, and she was paying cash. Instead of handing the money over like a decent human, she tossed it and waited for me to pick up the coins. I picked up the coins and smiled, asking if she was okay, and brushed it off as an accident. On my lunch break, she did it to the local cafe worker, a girl who was around my age. I asked around, and yeah, she did this to all the kids who served her. So, I did what any mature 21-year-old did. I worked in a pharmacy, bought some laxatives, and waited after my shift. I went to the local public toilet that I knew she cleaned and let out the biggest, wettest, most cramp-induced shit I had ever had. It hurt, and I swear I lost a few kilograms. I pulled out a sharpie and wrote in the cubicle, treat us with respect, and you throw money, we throw shit, and so on. I did a stakeout. I was a distance away in a parking lot and waited. I ate some macas and waited. Around 7.30 to 8 o'clock, she arrived in her glorious uniform and her trolley of goods. She went in and came out and choked. I laughed and watched. She was in there for close to an hour. The next time I served her, she was timid. She was scared. She did not throw money at me. TLDR, I took laxatives to get revenge on a cleaner who was mean to me and my peers. Edit. Thanks for the awards, guys. Here's a follow-up. 
So about a week or so after this shit happened, she was back into the pharmacy and she was all bitchy again, but no money throwing. I decided to do one last smaller non-laxative induced herd for her. This time I didn't do a stakeout because I couldn't be fucked. But I left a decent sized turd baby in that porcelain with only one thing written in Sharpie. We are still watching you. I reckon she got the message because she stopped being a massive bitch after that. Last I heard of her, because it's been like eight years now, is that she had quit her job not too long after and is a quiet and respectful customer now. Remember kids, violence is never the answer. You can show people the light by opening your blinking abyss. Shit. I've only done this once. Basically, I had been on the road for work all day and stopped at a Chipotle to get some food in me. Naturally, I have to take a growler right after eating, so I go in the bathroom to blow it out. About five minutes in, this kid starts banging on the door to use the bathroom while I'm trying to handle my business. I told him it was occupied, but this crotch fruit wouldn't give up. He had this high-pitched voice and was telling me to hurry up and just wouldn't leave me alone. I decide if he wants on as fast as possible, I could get him in about three seconds earlier if I don't flush, so I leave the war crime behind. When I walked out, I couldn't help but give him a smirk as he said, Finally! This was in the middle of Missouri, and his dad probably looked like sea base, so I was already halfway out the door when I heard the kid yell, Are you serious? Disclaimer, this is the story about my war crime shit. I was pooping in a stall at Union Station in Los Angeles. It was one of those legs to the wall, I can feel the separate layers within my intestines all being vacated type shits. It was totally thorough. I'm in a stall near the entrance to the public restroom. I can hear the footsteps and the comments of everyone as they enter. A boy and his father walk in. It smells like poopy in here, daddy, or something along those lines. A few moments later, an old voice yells from a stall to my left, God damn, prison rules, motherfucker. Give us a courtesy flush on that shit. At this point, I'm trying not to laugh. This shit has been a nonstop experience. My anus is open, and I'm like a soft-serve ice cream machine down there, man. When it's time to wipe, I barely have enough room to drop in the TP. I left and never look back. One time I was in a really crowded airport bathroom and had to pee after this long flight. I ran into the bathroom and every stall had a long line coming out of it except for one stall. I took my chances and chose the stall without a line. There was a shit mess everywhere. I really had to pee so I aimed where the toilet was hiding underneath all the poop. As I'm peeing a line starts to form outside the stall because the next people in line now think the toilet is usable. I start freaking out because they are going to think I'm the one who left all the poop. I finished peeing, opened the door, and shouted, I didn't do that! It was like that when I got here. I heard the next guy in line start swearing when he saw what was in the stall. I walked away with the idea that at least it's an airport, states away from where I live, and hopefully no one will ever recognize me. This will get buried, but story time. I was on a road trip with a couple of friends a few years ago and ended up going into a moderately busy chain-slash-buffet-type restaurant to eat lunch. We are Canadian, and this took place in the USA in the middle of summer. Along the way, I discovered a flavor of blue Gatorade we did not have in Canada that I loved, and I had been chugging those bad boys as I have a condition that causes me to get dehydrated easily. This becomes important. While at dinner, I feel that rumble in my gut that tells me it's almost business time, so I head to the bathroom. It's very nice and clean, and I have my choice of about half a dozen stalls to do drop this deuce off. I do so without incident. I finish up doing my thing, and as I stand over the toilet, I notice that what I had left behind was not only a beast, but almost neon blue from this exotic foreign Gatorade. Pretty cool, but not something I would think somebody else wanted to see. The toilet, however, had other plans. I tried to flush the toilet, and nothing happened. I try again, and again, and this toilet has decided to go on strike. I'm not this toilet's union rep, so I'm in no place to negotiate. The washroom is empty at the time, so I decide I have to just leave it. I depart the stall and walk over to wash my hands in the sink. As I'm washing my hands, another gentleman enters the room. Just as I'm turning to leave the room, I notice that, of 
all the urinals and toilet stalls he could choose from, he walked right into the one I just defouled with what looked like a sentient blue alien deuce. Fortunately, since he didn't see me walk out of that stall and there were many options, it could not be concluded that I must have been the culprit. But I admit I found it pretty hilarious that the last thing I heard while leaving the restroom was an exclamation of, oh, what the fuck, from the stranger. I hope my giant blue turd didn't cause that poor man permanent psychological damage. About six months ago, I came across one of these that will haunt me for the rest of my days. I mean, I've seen nasty shit covered bathrooms before, we all have. Some of us, I am forced to acknowledge, have covered bathrooms in shit themselves. May they burn forever in hell. This wasn't that. Everything was in the bowl, but I can't really say where it belonged, because this did not belong in any human plumbing. I've seen sewer mains that could not have transported this deuce. It was massive. We're talking the goats.cx guy must have stopped here massive. It was fully as large around as my calf, and I am not a small guy. I stopped, horrified, then lifted my arm before me, palm up, and looked at my forearm before looking back into the bowl. Again, it is not a small forearm, but it looked like a small forearm that day. If the turd had been inside me, I would not have been able to walk. Had it wanted out of me, I'd have had to dole a poop knife enough that it could be applied internally. It led from just below the rim of the long, bold, king-sized toilet right down to the drain, which it did not enter even a little because it would not fit. I can still see it in my mind's eye, and I wish I could not. It looks like something you might pick up while camping to throw on the fire bed, fully expecting to have coals remaining in the morning. I slammed the door of the stall and backed away. And then, I am embarrassed to admit, I stepped forward again and reopened the door, not believing it would still be there, because I must have imagined it. I didn't imagine it. When we were in Greece, I took a massive shit at a restaurant in the middle of nowhere. There was a sign when I walked in that appeared to show a person wipe their ass and then put it in the garbage. I thought nothing of it until the bowl wouldn't flush and realized the sign was literally telling me to wipe my ass and put the paper in the garbage. Anyway, the bus beeped its horn twice, and I knew if I wasn't on that bus, they were leaving me. So there I am staring at this massive turd pile and a pile of shitty paper not flushing. So I said, fuck it. I live thousands of miles away from here and need to get on that bus. So basically, I sprinted from the restroom and paraphrasingly yelled, sorry, I took a shit and didn't throw my TP away, I'm American. And they just nodded and said safe travels, like Americans showing up and taking massive shits just to up and leave was normal. It was in that moment I truly understood where the USA stood in the world. Crazy times. Once when I was around 10, I pooped in a public bathroom. To preface, this was a busy area at Disney World where you had to wait to use the bathroom due to how many people were there. This day, I laid a log so large that I knew deep down it was meant to stay where it laid. Fate had a different plan though, and I found out that I'm not a fan of automatic toilets that day. And my 10-year-old self kept moving in front and out of the way of the sensor to flush. The toilet flushed each time, the war crime level dump, until finally the toilet paper blocked the hole. While the back was turned because I was a dumb kid who wasn't paying attention, I ended up having the toilet start overflowing and just barely saved my pants from the ungodly nasty shit water pouring out. The other people in the closest stalls were not so lucky. I like to think that they didn't get nasty shit water all over their pants, but this isn't a fairy tale. I was so embarrassed I had trouble ever flushing in public after that. Not my shit, but a shit I bore witness to. Let's set the stage. Several years ago, suburban Del Taco on a busy Sunday, my stoner friends and I decided to get some delicious, cheap tacos and hit up that salsa bar. We all eat our fill and head back to the car. My friend Kevin, a lifelong vegetarian, and known war crime shitter says, hey, I'll be right back, I gotta take a shit. So we wait, and we wait. 15 minutes go by, he's not answering texts, so I start to get out of the car to go see if he's okay. Just as I got out, I see him running away from the front door with the biggest grin on his face being yelled at by two kids. He explained his prolonged absence. When he went to the bathroom, he noticed a couple of kids, 12 to 13, sitting at a table right next to the bathroom hallway, giving him the old hairy eyeball. 
Thinking nothing of it, he goes into one of the stalls, starts to de-pant and sit, but then stops mid-squat because something catches his eye. Hot sauce packets. Tucked ever so carefully under the toilet seat, poised to explode on whatever unlucky soul sat next. He lifted the seat and took out the packs, then proceeded to unload a Moab into this Del Taco toilet. Would have made Saddam blush. He finished up and made his way to the drink station to get a refill before leaving, in which time the two kids bolted in the bathroom to see the aftermath of their carnage and reset their trap. What greeted those boys was another brand of carnage altogether. Yo, dude, that's the nastiest shit I've ever seen. That's fucked. You're a sicko. Their cries only made him laugh harder. He got to the car and we made a beeline out of there. Meanwhile, he's telling us this story. The driver has to pull over because we're all laughing so hard. Then he pulls out his phone to show us the picture he took. You know those alleged pictures of the Loch Ness Monster? It was sort of like that. Parts of it so large it was breaching the surface of the bowl water. Big around as a baby's arm with distinct layers from several meals. Truly a work of art, a regular shit casso. Anyway, that's just one of several war crime shit stories I have. Maybe one day I'll write a book. Not my story, but a friend's that he told me. He took a dump so massive in his uni residence building that it blocked the pipes and caused major overflowing and flood damage. He never claimed responsibility knowing that he had really fucked the place up. This event became a legend on campus. Fast forward to the repairs. He is walking on the floor below ground zero when a maintenance panel in the ceiling popped down, not properly secured, and hit him in the head. As he was on scholarship, the uni accepted liability and offered a payout of 10k. My man took a shit so large he made $10,000. Fucking legend. The last time I posted this, I got multiple golds on another account. It gets sad, but it's funny as fuck. And it took place six years ago this week. It's long, but please read. There is some setup. Just read it. This is the last time I made my dad laugh. Literally. This story. He was scheduled for some tests at the hospital, and so I went to be there to see what the results were. It was an angiogram, so kind of a big deal. I woke up late and in a rush. I grabbed clothes out of the dryer. However, we had washed a down comforter and it broke apart and feathers were everywhere. Stopped by McDonald's and grabbed two Egg McMuffins, ate them on the way, got to the hospital and immediately had to shit. Bad. Like having to do the walk. And something was seriously wrong with my underwear, too. I had not been to this hospital before, and when I finally found the bathroom, it was out of service. But a nurse directed me to another. It was a single, handicapped-capable bathroom. I ran in there, nearly didn't get my pants down fast enough, and when I did, feathers flew everywhere from my clothes. From the comforter that broke. Clumps and clumps of feathers. And then the explosion of liquefied egg McDeath muffins came. Saying it was bad is an understatement. Wiped and stood up to survey the damage. I was not prepared for the sight. There was shit and feathers fucking everywhere. It looked like someone shit out a goddamn chicken. It was a sight to behold, and I thought... What would I think if I came across this? I would wonder about what the fuck happened forever. And so I decided that someone else should have that honor. To come upon something that looked like an emu shit golem being born. And with that, I left it. I told the story to my dad later that night and he laughed and laughed. This was February 11th, 2015. Two days later, on the 13th, my birthday. He died of a heart attack. Miss you, Dad. Edit. Customary, thanks for the gold, kind internet stranger. We had a guy called Lester the Nester at work. Story time. So, I work at a large campus with dozens of buildings. Due to the nature of my work, the group I work with uses a lot of physical space relative to the number of people working in the building. As you can imagine, with such a low worker density, pretty much everyone in our building knows each other. Moreover, the ass-to-toilet ratio is primo. I mean, there are probably more toilets in our building than people that regularly are in the building. The bathrooms were always clean. If you're poop shy, you could always find a bathroom without feet under the stall. 
You could say that our building was the best-kept pooping secret on campus. That is, until it wasn't. One day, I took Stroll into the handy crapper to unload my morning constitutional. As you're anticipating, I happened upon an absolutely battle scene, much to my dismay. Toilet paper everywhere, like an entire roll laid upon the seat alone, with scraps of toilet paper scattered about, some dangling off of the handrail, balls of toilet paper on the floor. This person put a ton of effort into turning the first-class stall into their poop paradise. No amount of cheek sweat was penetrating the toilet paper ass gasket that this poopetrator deposited. But to make matters worse, the motherfucker left the most heinous diarrhea splattered everywhere. I don't even understand how they did it. The water was black, poop up the sides of the bowl. Some splattered along the rim. It was truly impressive. I can only imagine he decided to leave it so we could all appreciate his handiwork. What baffled me is that for all of the toilet paper he used, there wasn't any in the bowl from him wiping. My mistake was thinking this was a one-off occurrence. This went on daily for months. It was the most talked about water cooler topic throughout Lester's magnificent runs. That is, until one of my coworkers caught Lester in the act. Turns out, it was an intern in his early 20s that came from all the fucking way across campus just to destroy our innocence. I think the shame of being caught in the act scared him away, because he was never to be seen or smelled again. Sometimes I still wondered how he cleaned up his ass without leaving a trace of skid-marked toilet paper. At a Walmart I worked at, would happen one to four times a week for like two months straight. Someone would go use the handicap bathroom in the back of the store and not just blow up the toilet bowl and look like they smeared it everywhere, but also over the top of the toilet seat and looked like they didn't bother to clean themselves and just slid around. Was so confused at what had happened and so sad for the poor janitorial people. 